And to me, still the premier jungler of League of Legends right now. Took some very small nerfs, has not perturbed anyone. Still a very big deal. And Danny, 3-0 and zero on Ezreal in the first week. Took a quick misfortune game back on Ezreal. Mm -hmm. Eve G's read is they want to play a relatively weak laning, but scaling safe marksman as a priority for Danny. Okay, so with the Kai'Sa locked in on the other side, you kind of expect the default combos, the Kai'Sa Nautilus and the Ezreal Karma, but you can have some uh, last minute changes. EG, one of my favorite little adjustments that they made was when they saw full dive from 100 Thieves in week one, they actually locked in Braum instead with the Ezreal, which is not the poke, you know, lane dominant karma combination that we're so used to seeing, right. but completely stuffed the team fights. And Braum is very good versus Kaisa because you know they're going to dive, but also versus Viego, melee carries locking him up. So, oh, it yes, can I get it? Thank you. Kobe. Vulcan, please. Smart man. Smart man. It's going to be Rakan, actually. Well, so at still... least he gave the shout out first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Knows it was played before. Inspired. It's like, no, no, no I'm not going to be in this one. So this will still look like a relatively weak lane. I expect Kais to have wave control as long as you have yeah. a, a warm body for support. A warm uh, body for yeah. support. I mean, please be a sentient. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, please be sapient. Be actually, you know, try to kill minions. Because if you're like, oh, no, I'm River Shan. It's like, oh, well, you lose Pryo, obviously, right? But um, for the most part, you expect to do pretty well there. Sinja going to be matching up in the jungle so uh early pressure here for inspired uh not so this will be his first pick on sinjao in the split mm -hmm. um had played it before this will be number I 10 zin has been him on the year. zin has been regaining play rate since the little buffs that were added to him he, he got hit really hard yeah. in durability patch um fell off a bit of a cliff there because he relies so much on early skirmishes early action um, but with the little adjustments, uh, compensation buffs has started to come back in when you want to be able to duel the Viego. Viego is the common early duel force on Rift Herald when you're level six and maybe you get some reset level six, uh, you know, godlike fight up by Rift Herald. Yeah. Zin is the champ that you take if you want to actually fight that. So I like this. This is going to be classic contracts versus inspired. Neither jungler backing down. Uh, and right. there's our Nautilus that we, you know, we're talking about with the Kaisa early lock. Uh, you've called almost the entire champ suck so far, Kobe. Nicely done here. We're on to the next phase of bans, and we know that, uh, let's see. So both teams have the exact same role. So mid and top are priority. CLG get counter pick on one role. They're going to blind the other and saying, okay, we're going to start getting rid of things like GP. Maybe those are the safe top laners you're looking at. Yeah, top lane's so much more uh, volatile with considering counter picks than mid lane right now. Um, I know I know Power Fox is one of the mid laners in LCS that actually indexes very heavily towards melee carries. So that might make it more spicy um, and, and JoJo as well. But really top lane is so much better served by these hard counter picks. So the Gangplank and the Kale banned out from uh, from CLG for Dokla. Yeah. And response here from EG, they don't want Dokla, you know, blind picking Fiora. He is willing to do it. Uh, it's going to be one of these carries for him. Talia dropped as well. Already two picks on the split for Powell Fox. I think she is a very, very good mid laner. So I think wise for EG identify. Kind of things he likes to play. Yeah, exactly. And it, it is played right into CLG's strategy that identified last split. And they, uh, last split, some of the core tenants were Palafox roaming bottom to get bottom lane prio, and then having Poom move with contracts a bunch uh, once he was freed up from bottom lane. So Palafox has played two Talias and also a Twisted Fate. Yep. So many roaming focus champions, but. We yeah, we found the only three people in the world who would like Orn. Uh, I heard we want Orn chance. <laughs> uh, we get Nar, uh, less spicy to be sure from Impact. No, Gragas. All right, so Gragas in the top lane. We did see, uh, I believe, Whippo play at full. No, it was a Wonder play at full AP in LEC just two days ago. Going to be seeing a LeBlanc here as well. A reasonable mix of damage types here. We'll see and the tanker actually. It's just AP. JoJo full comfort. It is JoJo specialty here. Please lock that in. Uh, you know he's confident uh, locking that because. Um, you know, going, uh, oh no, Corky, all right, scaling well, option. it gives him way better poke with the Ezreal, uh, way better scaling options here for EG, uh, definitely safer, but uh, would have loved to see it because LeBlanc, uh, you know, pressure mid with a Zin Zhao mm -hmm. is so much kill pressure, and especially considering you have a Rakan roaming support, but is going to be the scaler a uh, lot weaker in the early lane phase there once you lock in the Corky. And it's up to Palafox here to answer. They already, as we mentioned, they're showing full dive in their first picks. You can't really divert from dive if you lock in Kai'Sa Nata, Nautilus yep. uh, and Viego, and so they're going to continue with that theme. Full dive it is for CLG. 
uh, back on uh, the, you know, two years ago, even bongo comp uh, yeah. for CLG trying to go all in here. Powell Fox though, should, should probably get some early moves off uh, depending on jungle interactions early on. Mm. Uh, Silas definitely uh, can have the earlier and quicker roams to the bottom side of the map than the Corky can. Yep. CLG got the trades in. Looks like EG maybe facing a uh, trade bug themselves. And John Rakan obviously going to be trading and tie for first by taking down <laughs> evil geniuses. Nice wildlife. Nice, that well was done. good. 10 out of 10. You know, the Evil Genius players were looking for a better chance, too, because they did not like the uh, first one. <laughs> I from remember. Finals weekend? Yeah, from Finals Weekend that people were coming up with. Yeah, which yeah, was e like. G -U -A -A. Yeah, which is. <laughs> you know, fine. Oh, Vulcan double knockup. We got a fight. We got Dokla getting chunked but staying alive. Stun lands. Impact low. Flash follow. One more kill. First blood for Palafox and the Silas. Danny forced a flash away, but we've got a body slam contract. It's a bit aggressive. And as long as you can buy in time, that is a Doran's ring in the inventory of Palafox. Woo! Bring back those CLG chants. Let's go. What a start to this one. CLG with the invade and rewarded for it. First blood onto Palafox. This is yep. a critical one, Freak, because Silas does scale super well as well as being critical for CLG's plan of roaming towards the bottom side of the map. And here it is. They walk in, they sweep the ward. Vulcan actually goes for the one-two punch with impact, and they get the ignite down onto Dokla, but the rest of the team is not close enough for damage fallout. That was the big key there. And then Palafox follows the flash over. Huge stuff from him. It's actually yep. really common to have uh, that level one invade, where if you have someone who can jump this wall over Dragon Pit, you go for the pincer movement, and you get that sort of dream yep. scenario this time around. Anybody with snares can can hover over that Dragon Pit, by the way. Yep. Whole drum line looking at the mid lane, and nice. so far, so good. Thank you. Uh, don't Perfect setup. F F Freak is actually in a drum line. I was. I actually played snare. I was section leader my senior year. Shout out anyone who played a marching band. Y'all are wonderful. Boom. If it was any Wait, easier. Wait, down, is he one? Yeah, big damage. Jojo Bun is on fire. Palafox, E cooldown, gotta be pretty far away. It gets a bit more damage. Oh, that was that was a nice try. Good size up <laughs> of Jojo. Yeah, the no look, walk away. He gets his level two first as well. Jojo's w. unafraid of the W. w. And for good reason. Yeah, yeah. Good All right. trade back. Yeah, really good trade by Jojo. Gets a little damage. Palafox being overplayed it a little bit. Cooldowns are up. By the way, Corky E does just the most damage and Dude, Gotta respect that one. Did you catch this? Maybe. He was so confident in their level one invade. He has two sacks on his dark steel. Fight. Yeah, he's dark steel started. Yeah. I did. I did not even catch that first time around. He actually was so confident with the refillable dark steel start. It always feels good to be able to greed and just be like, no, I get to I get to start refillable. I have to buy potions. Ever. Greed does always feel good. It feels. <laughs> and I think you're rewarded with two stacks, so then you're just you know goofy. If it, and also, if your greed doesn't pay out, then blame teammates. Yeah, and also it's like you're refillable, so you have to like get sent back to base. Like it's okay. Oh, dump in, pretty good damage. Contract, that's, flash. that's not gonna be the kill. Flash follow for contract, not gonna land. Good reflex from Jojo Pion. But it's also always worth it as a jungler to do that trade when it's a corky mid lane. You want to just abuse this corky early on in the game. Very happy to trade your jungle flash for the mid lane flash there. It's not gonna be here in the bottom side as well. Aftershock is on for Poom, not gonna do too much more damage in the trade. Danny plays for a one more auto attack, and it's a half HP Nautilus, good engaged by Vulcan. All right. Spicy. Yeah. So 450 gold lead to CLG. It was 500 and change from the first blood. As the lanes kind of go back and forth. Dokla has a lot of early pressure. Impact yeah. missing only some of the farm. Actually gets the two cast at the end. 15 to 25 on the fourth or fifth wave reset. Yeah. Actually not too bad here for Evil Geniuses considering the unfortunate start from them. Um, but we'll see if the... No teleport or flash here on JoJo actually gets punished. That's what I'm looking at here. The repeat focus from CLG. Uh, if you can get Nautilus roams, one of the best supports here to try and roam towards mid. Uh, vision around River obviously would be critical in that endeavor, and Vulcan's going to find this ward in his first roam towards mid. Vulcan gonna go ahead and swing 105 gold, cost 25 to buy, earn 30, even earn some XP. Wow. Killing wards really is just huge. Dokla keeps the push going 100% of the time. And, and I love the double pronged play for vision around mid lane. When your mid laner gets summoners burned like that and has no previous existing vision, they call support and jungle. So good reactions here from evil geniuses 
um, tried to stem the bleeding around that mid lane because of the gank and no flash from the, the rest of the supporting members. Yeah. Muse a bit of the damage. I actually like the direction these Skrizen was cast, by the way, from Contracts through into his own jungle, which might look weird, but if, like, one of the primary warding spots that people send is over in front of the Gromp. Mm -hmm. That is, like, one of the primary early trigger wards to put down because it tracks these second clears. He's like, did someone put it down? Do we miss it? Okay, no ward there. Not a problem. Damage from Palafox there. Pretty good. Boom coming around as well. His, of course, own flash is down. Otherwise, that could have been a flash anchor play and maybe would have found the second kill. I'm pretty sure we have some spectator bug and it's a hex flash because look at the cooldown training down. So definitely uh, think he had that one. Meanwhile, back to bottom side, contracts will clear up the rest of that vision. And again, this highway between mid and bottom, especially for CLG games, is so critical for them. Uh, for the way that they've liked to play. That zombie ward from Vulcan's earlier clear, though, still mm -hmm. remains. So gonna be trade blows in the mid lane right now. Does Jojo gonna ahead in farm? A quick easy trade back oh, and forth. Jungle is fighting level five each. Inspired down to 400, but thinks he likes his sustain options. They go back in though. Palafox's first move. Vulcan around. Vulcan now be spotted by this. Goes in, finds the first stun. Puma get over the wall as well. Last plant brings them both to safety. Luger wants to step up, but pushed away by Danny. It's attempt by CLG. Evil Genius is on the retreat. The aggression continues, really trying to leverage off of the early first blood from Palafox and the constant pressure he's putting on this Corky. Again, goes for another heavy trade, allowing Contracts to start up this Dragon. He just says, hey, Juan, I've got mid pressure here. Corky cannot come. Go ahead and start up. And last I checked, I don't play Corky much anymore, but it's like a 26 second cooldown and like a hundred mana cost on Valkyrie. So it, it's, it's, it's huge. It, it really hurts losing Valkyrie compared to other champions. Yeah, okay, able to Valkyrie out of base now. Looks like, you know, 20 and change. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 22 I think is, is my guess right now, but uh, yeah, that's pretty painful. Has got the Hex Drinker. Very common for Corky to rush Hex Drinker first uh, in AP matchups. It's not necessarily just being scared, but just kind of the correct option. Yeah, uh, especially if you're double AP solo laners from the opponent team, yeah, so it's gonna yeah. have value. Yeah, even Kaiso does a little bit, so very valuable item. Uh, and that's gonna make it much easier for Judge of Fun to handle all this stuff. MR functionally is more regen. Since you take less damage, your regen kind of goes farther. Flash, pretty good. flash coming up here for Jojo, though. So they have been able to weather the storm, even though they had to give up Dragon uh, because of the, the lack of Pryo on mid. His flash will be back up uh, from that early gank, which also means, guess what? Viego is going to have his as well. And Viego approaching that level six. One of the mm. things that we set up in Champ Select that we can continue now is to talk about the Rift Hail fights. Uh, and it being one of the big reasons why Diego is picked so frequently in the current meta because he's so good at skirmishing, is so good at the level six spike towards the eight minute mark for Rift Herald fights. Uh, when you have your flash, when you have your level six, which you just acquired now, uh, then you just need to work on the solo lanes pushing up to try and get that advantage set. Bottom lane, of course, can have an influence on it. Uh, if they push up, it's always nice to get the early recall on Rome, but. Well timed Arcane Shift, flash to find the root there as well. Flash away from Danny. That's going to be those summoners traded back and forth. Indeed, you are right. It is Hex Flash there on Boom. You're seeing that cooling back down now. Wow, they actually fixed the uh, overlay there. Nice. Nice hot fix. Yeah. Maybe they just need to go and cool in again. Who knows? But we are on a pretty decent spot. They're looking again at the play in mid lane. Hex Trigger is in for the Corky. Still decent damage out of Pallet Fox, though. So he loses half his health back as well. Of course, has to stand to the champion. He's going to the W for it. Contracts, may find something else to do. Yeah, already poking around uh, the kind of decision point here between Rift Road and mid lane gank, but because there's the Scuttle Crab, and if you go from the bottom side, it will see you. They know he's in here. And it's gonna matter. Dokla kind of keeping the wave at equilibrium, wants to be able to Rakan's move if coming. he needs to. Lowish health bar, but the impact a bit low on mana. Now Boom is there as well. Gonna be there a bit before the opposing Jungler, uh, the, sorry, the Evo's in support as Danny well. has teleport. Away. Danny has teleport, but he's using it back lane to bottom lane. Given. So it is given up. Now it should be Luger just making a beeline back down to bottom. And we just see, can Danny, how quickly can he get those uh, minions into the turret on bottom side? Because I think that Luger actually will get there to catch them. So if CLG are able to finesse this into a Rift Herald without any turret plates given up, huge value here. And we actually do get to see uh, you know, the, the setup pay off for the, for the big Rift Herald there, forced by Diego, by Contracts, and CLG pick up another neutral objective. That is Dragon and the first Hail Freak. You don't have to make the choice uh, yeah. of giving one up. CLG get to uh, eat both of them. If you have that much pressure, right, you can you can get 
you know, Dragon Spawn's at five, Hero Spawn's at eight. You have that three minute window of theoretically getting both. It can really tax your timing. You have to have a lot of control, but it does feel good to get both. Yeah, and and you can kind of even connect the dots from the early gank blowing the flash on Corky and all this mid pressure on Corky as the root cause of the problem there for them. <laughs> or even if we want to go further back uh, to the LeBlanc cover instead. Ah, yes. And being like, well, we don't have the early prower there, but of course then you get the benefits of Corky Rockets later into the game, and those have proven to be well worth it with how much scaling has gone on in the current meta. See if JoJo can eventually get to this point. Looks like Palafox took his first ulti uh, recently to steal Corky Rockets. Use it for wave clear, actually. Yeah. Got rid and of to the get the blue over the wall without yeah. having to use his chain. Or his Q. It's but yeah, also his chain. <laughs> Q and R's chain, so it's not really any different. Yeah. But everything yeah. is chains for it, Silas. It kind of is. I mean, that, which to be fair, like if you're up in his chains, you should kind of be the entire kit, right? True, mm -hmm. true. All yeah. right. Are they actually looking bottom here? Because there, there is vision leading up from Evil Geniuses, and they're playing it safe. Okay, they're not showing at all. So you, we see contracts kind of hovering. We also have Poom hovering here. They really want to force the play um, because of the champions, but no opportunity given by Evil Geniuses. Good, cautious play there from Danny and Vulcan. No small CS lead, though, to Jojo Kun still in the mid lane. Yeah, the bot lane going to be just safe, no problem. The gold lead has swung back to Evil Genius's favor. CLG, of course, yet to summon their Herald, but no lane has enough pressure to actually uh, make it crash for any more than two plates. Uh, but EG have been winning in lanes outright. What's interesting is the stat from the first week, they were actually neutral in gold at 14 minutes. They actually weren't building gigantic leads on average, but here they are definitively outlining CLG, who are up 550 from the first blood. Yeah, like marginal. Here we go with the play on bottom side, though. Palafox over the wall. They're on. They were on a ward. Okay. Yep. Well, we get a little time to attack a plate. So there's one going down there. Tries it back up on the scoreboard here. Second dragon is alive. And CLG, did they have the control to go for it? Because Inspired is on the way through. It's going to be a brush camp as Contracts may solo this. Package picked up by Corky as well. So even though the top lane 1v1 is going on, Dragon also. Anchor on the front line, though. It's going to be Rakan going in for a lot as well. Big damage and be careful of Palafox. Boom, both very low. Trying to win for their lives. Danny gets it off, but the last one inspired. Wind becomes lightning and boom becomes gold. And they're going to look for a little bit more now. Inspired wants to la last couple of shots, won't find it. Palafox walks away. The dragon attempt results in a death for CLG. The package is so, so big here from JoJo burning off of CLG, forcing them to run through their own jungle, picking them up with the extra uh, skill shots here. Meanwhile, back to the top lane duel, enough. baby. Oh, the region is going to be enough. Dokla is ulti list, but wants the sniffs. W, here. one hit. Careful, because a body slam Q combo would kill him, so Dokla has to fall back. Impact knows he's almost out of lethal range now and gets to get the wave. Meanwhile, mid lane, Contracts is going in on JoJo. It does have his flash, but there's not enough damage there, I don't think. The ulti would get him to like maybe 200, and you don't have any cooldowns left afterwards. So, hop sway from that one. We keep our close game. Such a big, big move here, the dragon fight from Evil Geniuses. Being able to retake that control, use the package. Um, meanwhile, yeah, be careful. Luger gets chunk down to below half HP, but with Danny's ulti down, now not a lot of cooldowns to burst with, so stays okay. All right, we finally got that Rift Herald money, though, that you are looking for from CLG. So that evens out the gold, and the Dragons, of course, being evened up after that last fight. Palfox even sticking around to take another plate by hand. Wow. Getting more money into Silas is one of my favorite things because you just kind of need this early bump of cooldown reduction. And Silas can actually just grab a bunch of the cooldown reduction parts, which you see Palfox going for um, to be able to spam out his um, you know, W as well as the ulti. Yeah, yeah Everfrost parts are pretty convenient like that. Feels pretty good. Uh, of note for those still, you know, playing and wanting to farm. Hold on, we got a fight going on. The replay of that bot lane one for zero. All right, so again, JoJo comes through with the package. This is a big play. They make the hook onto the Zin, but don't have the damage there immediately. And then Zin ult plus Quirky package. That's just a huge difference in frontline health bars. So once you get the frontline health bars going in your favor, all these skill shots, literally from every DPS member there on EG, um, Ezreal, Corky, and Zin chasing them back through their own jungle. Punish CLG. All right, take stock of the game once again. Equal gold, equal drakes, and equal everything. Oh, how's this game gonna go from here as Danny TP's once again back to the bottom lane. Unleash teleport is in. So shorter cooldown for that one and can target anything he wants now from here on out. Kraken Slayer also in now for the Kai'Sa, so Luger uh, not actually itemizing for the burst of backline option, but actually for the auto-attacking frontline option, it is going to be, uh, looks like it is going to be at least, you know, partially 
Uh, AP Grag is here, cooldown boots, and he's got that blasting wand, so Everfrost seems very likely here. Um, Sinja only so tanky, but ultimately Luger says, no, I need to actually punch to the front line, more so than, you know, ulting an Ezreal and Gale forcing him. The root in the mid lane looking pretty solid there. Prowl Fox, yes indeed. Gonna find a decent trade. Corky Rock is still landing. The Zinjipun lands some back. Side steps one, hits his own. Inspired nearby. His flash is still down from getting the prior kill. And not able to chase for anything inspired. Yeah. Not a lot of extra tools. And Zhao, the E is point and click. They have to be on in range and you get nothing. Yeah. And the fun, the fun Silas ultimate just keeps on being Corky Rockets going into minions. Is gonna be a force on Wait, the tower they can though. Cancel tower. They can cancel turret. Kill it. They need to hit it one more. There's not gonna be a TP. That could be a good fight now. Is it gonna be enough though? Is the question Ulti. still hitting inspired? And they find that kill. And they can go for a bit more diving into the turret. They flash away. An ult to follow Vulcan. One hit away. He need it. He's gonna flash. And but he's still gonna die, right? That's always gonna be a kill picked up. So he trades the one for one. Jujubun gets the kill credit. Here comes Gragas, will not trade in the ulti, won't matter. This also means that you leave top lane open for Dokla pushing in. So CLG making the best of this all in on the tower. That was a that was a very low chance of that teleport ever working out because of how low the health on the tower was. So uh, definitely a bit of a flip right there. And EG do get punished. Contracts is the type of player that's always going for that kill, though, Freak, at the end. He's chasing yeah, yeah. you under tower. He is a bloodthirsty player. Again, this tower, only a few hits away. And so Inspired goes in to try and buy time to, for the tower health, but there, there's no way that thing is surviving. So it does go down, turns into a lot of DPS on him, and CLG are very happy. Pick up the tower, pick up the kill onto the jungler. Could have stopped there, but uh, go for the extra 1-1 one, one at the end. Gives up a little bit of extra gold. Meanwhile, the reset here, impact. Really good cast. Do they have the damage? 300 HP ulti is up. Conqueror as well. Sniff, sniff, but Danny takes him down in the end to assist. And a third kill on the board for evil geniuses. Do you want to point out, every time there's one of these plays, though, it's a free pushing lane on the other side of the map for CLG. So though, constant plays, and this one actually in the hands of evil geniuses. Finishing up the kill on the Dokla does mean the other CLG solo laner pushing on bottom side. Rift Herald number two, though, means you have to answer a Rift Herald push. Otherwise, they're going to get so much gold. Secondary turrets, 800 gold. Somebody's going to have to get back there, and Dragon is available. Ulti gets back to Jojipen. Does stay alive. Vulcan down a couple of cooldowns. Doesn't kill the ward. But yes, we do have a turret trade. Top lane is dead. Bot lane is dead. But the Herald is there. Okay, they won't get the secondary tower, and Dragon is spawning here. CLG can pick it up. It's only number two because Evil Geniuses were able to make use of the package to get the second one. They aren't as scared now about the stacking for Soul. They're gonna buy a way more time for Corky to scale up uh, and really have significant poke. When you do have even semi-AP Gragas plus Corky plus Ezreal, that is a lot of poke setup yes. for their team. And it is going to be ooh, Night Harvester, actually, so it is much more poke heavy. I didn't even think about that being the option, but yeah, that's going to look really nice for him. So, uh, you know, it's a unique cooldown per champion. So, so you know, Luden's without the, the you know, only one at a time uh, kind of benefit. That's going to feel pretty good. Uh, on current live, it's buffed with the better build path, but yeah. this is the one with Blasting Wand that we saw earlier. Yeah, and, and right now, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, we're past the, he's got it anyway. We're past the build path. I love it, though, because especially uh, Impact with Flash available, can go for that big multi-person play. Uh, spread them out, and then you just poke down with your long-range abilities the stragglers that are closest enough to you. And so, yeah, he should be getting Night Harvester procs on multiple people, because you're always looking for the groupings as the Gragas uh, in this uh, this poking kind of bowling pins uh, style composition there from Evil Geniuses. We'll see if CLG can play their side lanes, though. Uh, again, they have really good dive options, which is what you want when you're playing into poke at all times. You've got Nautilus, guaranteed ultimate, uh, Palafox, and Luger as well, ready to follow up. Um. And even right now, I'm just going to take an angle of, hey, CLG looks really exciting because this entire split, and I've liked the the meta, right? It's been at least one enchanter every single game, sometimes two. This is the first game they played without an enchanter. And they're currently winning against an undefeated defending champion. Yes. Like, get you a team that can do both. Basically, right now, Evil Geniuses, by the stats, are the best team in the LCS. They won, uh, obviously, Spring, but also the only uh, undefeated team, as you say, yeah. in CLG. There were, they were nowhere even close to the top of the LCS. <laughs> For a long time, yep. Freak, it's been a long time, and the faithful are starting to believe again. 
Yeah. See if they can finish it out in this game, though. Once again, we mentioned the split push for CLG. It's a solo laner unanswered, so they're getting another a bunch of tower damage here for Palafox. Uh, this one, in exchange for impacts being able to push on, you see the respect from Dokla uh, because they don't have any vision through their blue quadrant of the jungle. He was like, okay, maybe they'll set up a dive. I want to be respectful. Don't want to overextend. True. But we're still seeing Corky and Ezreal reaching farther and farther into the game. I feel like those two scale quite well into late game. The poke becomes eventually unanswerable. Palafox going to find a slow, oh, but not that's... the stun. That could hurt a lot. He's taking a lot of damage here. Here comes Vulcan. Does not find the knockup. Gets the charm, though. Going to burn a stop watch. And I don't think there's any way out for this one. Inspire going to time the W well. Oh, he steals charm. Almost gets away. Forces two flashes to kill him. So at least some heroics from Palafox, but it is still a one for zero. Yeah, still gold in the hands of Corky, where you do not want it. Uh, and you mentioned the Poke Freak uh, that, that we're talking about scaling so heavily. I love any champion that can build Muramana. I think that item is turbo broken on any champion that can actually, you know, use it. Yeah. Um, the only problem is finding your champion that fits your role. Uh, that actually is not super hindered by the buildup and, and the tier path. But now after they're transformed, it's so much damage. And, and Evil Geniuses are now finally really ready to play. Past the 20 minute mark here, uh, they can set up towards these neutral objectives. Their main goal is of course to buy more time to throw out spells with the Ezreal, with the Corky. And so they're looking at, you know, disengage angles. Grog's trying to peel for them uh, and buy time and just more shots. The more shots you take, the more shots you're gonna hit. That's true. And they're gonna see them pretty soon here. We got the fourth Dragon of the game coming up in 90 seconds. Baron's available, but not a really respectable attempt yet. Yeah, tons of, uh, you know, ability haste uh, along with the ability power for the Gragas build too. So I wanna see how they utilize the zone control, setting up these barrels and and looking for the repeat seeds. Here we go, five members. Boom, gonna take some damage here. Ult's backwards, Aftershock on. Here comes the re-engage. Looks pretty good on the front line, but it's fire buying a lot of time here. Contract's the back line. He's got he Ezreal. And can he do the rest now as the back line is gonna be nothing. AP Gragas just gets deleted. CLG 2-0 right in front of Barry. They're gonna get it, Freak. CLG are in the house. And you got Boom ready to mark the rest of it. Inspired knows he's on a trinket. You got a recall, no TP for Jojo Pyon. Will it be a hero play? No flash, no smite, no hope. And it's gonna be CLG defending the fate. The 3,000 gold lead, a little bit of a skirmish. Hey, they're gonna coach kill him. Yeah. He, he walked in to stopwatch him. Maybe package, just die. Package. Anchor well time package comes in. Will inspire drop one for zero so far over the wall. Really beautifully done, but cannot quite find that kill. Rock is gonna be just shy. And Vulcan will drop as well. CLG take four straight kills. And they take the Baron. And they don't lose anyone, Freak. This is just in time for Dragon. Keep in mind, Baron empowered recalls. There's 15 seconds on that Dragon. This will be soul points. Baron in hand, tons of gold for Counter Logic Gaming. Who's the best team in the LCS now? Maybe FlyQuest to be in yesterday. Who knows? But it's going to be <laughs> really exciting seeing teams step up. Here we go. It's going to be Dragon being attacked. OK, wonderfully. And yes. Uh, Danny not even with an ulti available, cannot even attempt for the steal. CLG. Oh my. They ended week one in first place. By this scoreboard, they are about to end week two in first place. All right, they still have a lot of work to do versus the defending champions here. No who, have, who have had uh, such a prolific team fight. Uh, for Evil Geniuses, but this is very different for them. So I want to see some more of this comp because I actually really like the EG side with so much range and poke damage for later. If they can actually defend sieges here, uh, you know, with some disengaged Gragas ultimates, body slams as well, um, maybe they can buy some more time uh, for themselves to actually ward off Counter Logic Gaming. But CLG just have really good outs later into the game too because their dive is so strong and their split push is so strong. When you combine those two, it really lets you work with Baron like no other team. So this should be a lot of objectives taken. As the waves get pushed out, EG gonna find a couple of wards aggressively in their side of the map. They would like to defend Palafox. Again, the Zin Zhao ult. Low, stun. Do they have enough damage here? He's got the Sinjai ult. He's gonna be safe from any dive and indeed 
Just pops it, gets right back out. Not a long cooldown. Yeah, I mean, that that is the whole reason that they were able to buy time for the teleport for Dokla in the last team fight. Uh, you know, him stealing that Zen ult, engaging, getting EG grouped up, and just as expected, at least one tower down, now mid-second. Oh, oh good oh. cast, though. Palafox might have a zone available. He's going to go right back in for the fight, finds a stun. There's the pop, and they might just get that kill on a Sinjao. Contracts low, gets the no. He gets talking down in time. Shots come through. Tower helps. The one for one. Jungler's dead. Palafox one hit away. Just slinks away with his life. Tail between his legs, though. Baron timing out in 25 seconds. Red Bull Baron power play. 3.1 thousand gold. CLG can take the reset and count three minutes for Dragon Soul. Yeah, thank God they took out the tower shot immunity from Diego when you're picking up a oh soul. My. Because those were, those were truly, truly broken days. Uh, but the damage still going through this time around. Regardless, the objective bounties are here, Freak. Uh, the game is signaling how, just how far CLG are ahead. Let's take a look at how they uh, you know, start this one out again. We mentioned the Zin's out ult steal from Palafox was big in buying time for Dokla to get there. Uh, it is the full all in and then that Nautilus ultimate was just so juicy from Boom because Jojo just valped forward. And then that leaves Danny exposed on the bottom side. Contracts immediate beeline for that Ezreal. And it's one of the best bodies to pick up as a Viego too because then you get two more jumps after right. picking up that soul. Then the force down here onto Baron. They get it. They look for the turn. Package makes evil geniuses believe they can finish it off. And just it's a heartbreaker for EG. Look at how low Luger gets here. Perfect from Jojo. He makes sure he doesn't knock Luger uh, over the wall and keeps him pinned there, but oh, just so close to going down. He couldn't get him with the extra poke either. And because of that CLG, they don't lose any members and they get all the rewards. And now the 5,000 goalie, they're gonna try to take absolute control on this side. Malafox always playing very aggressively, currently holding on to explosive cast. Bit of poke towards contracts. Vulcan has no one to heal though. Cast gonna come down mostly for wave, it looks like. Triple hit from Danny, and the front line's gonna die. Palafox gets a stun, and he gets shut down. Now, Dragon's not up. It's not gonna be any more than just the kill. Looks like there was no other play to be made. I but, love I, I love these uh, these ultimates, Freak. Gra Gragas ultimates have such a wide variance uh, because of the impact of this skill, and a uh, huge one in this defense. If he pulls out a whole bunch of more Miracle, you know, Gragas ultimates, perfect Gragas ultimates can still win yeah. you fights no matter what. Surprisingly, EG are the ones with the Gragas ultis have impact as, well, we get more going on to get thumbs up from Kobe off camera. Yeah. But, you know, it was really... It was already there. done. Uh, yeah. You've also stated that you hate name puns. Yeah. Well, and yet you violated that yeah. rule. I feel yeah, like... Yeah, for years now. <laughs> you know, really just Contrast! for years. Okay. Dive in for Contrast. Gets one picked up. And with the shutdown, gets away from Drew Shopper. I think he took no damage. That one ulting away from Impact. Luger trying again. Not quite finding the damage. Impact finds the shutdown. A one for one. I love these teams. I love these players. They're still willing to just randomly throw down the brawls for the 2v2s in mid lane. Love it. They get uh, get out with a one for one in the end. Extra flash there from Luger, though, because he wanted to uh, get his kill as well, going for Danny's first. So we'll see about the flash cooldowns. Those are going to be the biggest things for these team fights uh, coming up here, because that one actually cost CLG quite a bit with the cooldowns. Danny was the only one on each who had to blow his contracts, and Luger now will be without. And timing is limited. Impact doesn't have TP. Jojo, no TP. Only Danny does. They're all walking out of base finish right now as Impact makes his way out the, uh, past the inhibitors. But Dokla can freely push top lane and TP when needed. Jojo Pion just going to consign himself to playing the wave and hope he can run, a, run around in time as Dragon spawns. Yeah, and this is why it's so beneficial for CLG to have such a strong split pusher. They've got Dragon Soul points, so even if they give it over to EG, they don't oh, lose Baron. much. <gasps> oh, this gets so dicey because, of course, they could credibly threaten Baron with these four. I, I mean, Douglas on the inhibitor turret. And yeah, exactly. Like, CLG, there are three different objectives that CLG care about. EG have one TP and can't cover all of them. TP to bot lane right now, and they've now started Dragon. Guess what? Corky gets the oh. Package, gets the knockback. Here comes Rakan, but that should mean Dragon Soul. Dokla's life. I've seen a CLG top laner run for his life in a 1v3 far across map, but the team gets the rest. It's gonna be Dragon Soul. And the spirit of Hotshot GG lives on. Dokla will die, but his team are the Dova Keen. As Dragon Soul is claimed, ready to go for more. All right, even with Dokla down, don't think there's a lot EG can actually force here. The only hope they would have would be go to Baron and maybe CLG make a positioning error while there's 40 seconds left on Dokla. Because Dokla did try and teleport, so he won't be able to teleport to the Baron fight if EG force it hard. 
Yeah, and they're on the pit right now. This is going to be the attempted force in a 4v5. 30 seconds to spawn. No teleport away as well. This could be everything turning all Rocket the way around. Rocket stolen. Not willing to leave this one away. Rocket not going to land. Rocket burned for nothing. That is an important cooldown missing. 3k health. Cast. Decent damage. True shot barrage only clips Luger. 4K Still in the pit is inspired. Down to 4k, as you mentioned. Down to 3. When's it going to happen here? Channeling the stun. Goes in. Finds nothing just yet. Are they going to flip? They're not willing to go for it yet. A contract has Zolt. Has Smite. Here goes Boom. Stun the back line. Danny jumps to the pit. Stays safe for now. Getting lower and lower. 2.5. In this pit he goes. This could be a kill. Oh, he's coming across. Smite back and forth. Contracts dies. Two for one EG. And a Baron gonna be claimed. One trade back, there was Kaisa in the back line. Luger pops the ult and kills off Danny. Three life for EG. Baron buff still alive on those members. Walking away with a bounty, a Baron, and an equal team fight. Ooh, some yellow pings trying to call them off as Luger and Puma are hunting. They get it. EG backs against the walls. The objective bounty shutdown on Baron is well worth it. It was the only chance they had, and they pull it off. Barely focusing down contracts here before uh, smite range. Just look how tense this gets. Boom, goes for the hook, flashes out immediately. Danny arcing shifted into the pit to commit more damage to Baron, and that causes contracts to then also follow up on the jump in during the Zonias from Impact. Palafox then tries to finish up the kill here onto Danny, but Danny over the wall again is able to escape from him, and he doesn't even go down until Luger commits the ultimate into the back. Smite from Inspired is true. They pick up the shutdown. Keeping this one spicy, Freak, even with that yep. Dragon Soul. EG now the ones with the push. Baron acquired to see how much gold they can get. Another objective bounty yep. shutdown. They are, of course, still down substantially in this game and trying to get their way back into it there. Uh, look at the bottom river. There might be something going on. A Steel Sinjo LT helps Palafox play frontline. He's got Death Cap done. Had it for a while, by the way. Previ pri uh, previous fight already had his Death Cap. So a lot of healing, a lot of damage available to him. Gold lead wanes to 600 as bounties Blank. might be falling off. Dokla, don't believe he was seen on the way up. He hugged the bottom wall, but EG not sticking around in mid lane. Now he gets spotted by the ward, kills it. Level 17 on the Gwen. Now we get to see that poke damage freak. It's so frustrating to deal with. Thus they can get their flank angle. Poom does have Hex Flash. Palafox, again, the Zin ult allows him to be the front line, but EG, just keep rotating. Corky has fully scaled, yep. so you just get to siege over and over and over again. With Zin having the Guardian Angel as well, another objective bounty shutdown for the evil geniuses. All right, gold on one side, Baron buff there as well, but the Dragon Soul and some XP belonging to CLG. Is it going to be enough now as they poke back and forth? Look a little something, no stun yet for contracts. Clips one. Danny fires that true shot barrage. Rockets Dokla on the flank. Dokla not spotted. Dokla could be around now, goes over a ward. And EG know what's going on here. They're going to walk the safety Palafox on that same route. But those wards, lifesavers. The blue trinket. They're, they're chasing so long that Impact would have an easy time teleporting and get the full time, uh, you know, yeah. going the rest of the team. Plus, then you take poke damage in the face. So you do not want to over chase that. Even though the scoreboard will tell you with the Dragon Soul and the objective bounties, uh, in the favor uh, of evil geniuses, I think they're actually not behind anymore in this game. Right. Like, this is a case of objective bounties. I, I don't trust you. Sure, <laughs> EG, yeah. are, EG are actually ahead because they have Corky Ezreal, massive poke here, uh, transformed Muramana, and the rest of the team ready to peel for them. Definitely valuing that soul very highly in the system, obviously. And well, we have the Elder Dragon spawning in 140. Baron, a full minute afterwards. So, Dragon going to be the only center of attention. And any wards you put down, if they're not swept, will last until that happens. This Vulcan wants to step up, try to play for the river as best he can. Feels safe enough with the W and E available to his nearby teammates. And indeed, able to get rid of some of these wards now. But we know that we are just a minute 15 away from an Elder Dragon fight. Similar graph that we saw earlier, CLG, a gigantic lead. Got walked back in the end. They dropped a comeback loss to FlyQuest yesterday. And then looking at a similar one right now is EG, again, sitting with the gold lead, soul or not. Exposed inhibitor still, so Dokla trying to pressure on the top side there for CLG as they want to use their split push, but these Corky Rockets hit so hard. If they're not able to dodge them, impact 2v1. Yeah, he can't get anything done. He's full AP. Like, this man is so squishy right now. Zonius won't save him from this one, so there he goes the inhibitor. Turret difference also, I believe, part of the bounties, and things like that are why. It's very easy to knock that inhibitor when there's no defense innately. Careful here, Inspired will be on a ward. Contracts feel safe as well. 30 seconds 
on the arrival of this Elder Dragon. And Super Minion's gonna keep constant pressure on top side now. Package picked up uh, just in time for this Elder Dragon by Jojo. They wanna make the long chase! On the way, 2v3, this could be really good. Dokla, you're running away for his ulti, he's hit damage to the impact. And of course, if he has E, can get away from Vulcan, does so, not a problem. Corking inside of the map, TP up. Eight seconds, Elder Dragon coming up, teleports and, available everywhere. And again, the macro from CLG, they are splitting on the other side as well. It's constant, one three one from them, splitting the map. They get a tower out of this, out of that chase towards the top side. Now, Corky Package still within JoJo's hands here, so forcing on the Elder Dragon is a way that EG have to force CLG during this package timer. And Doklus is on the split. TP gonna be channeled now uh, from Kaisa to join the fight. So 4v4, Poom hit, Palafox a bit low, gets away, Poom stays alive. Rest of the fight looks okay. Package burned, Contract's front line knocked up, dangerous. Ults away, but nearly dies. Anchor comes in, stopwatch just in time for Vulcan, but Poom jumps in, Danny gonna get him. And that's gonna look pretty good as Gwen keeps the push going. Elder Dragon resets, gets a couple thousand health back, and Contract can barely fight with this one. He's gotta keep his flank, gotta keep his flash. He's gotta be careful as well. 4k health, they're still gonna respect this one. As oh. Palafox wants in, cannot find the charm. Where's the Zonias? Runs for his life. Chase down. Vulcan can't get him just yet, though. 3k health. Contracts is stealth. Have to respect it. They go to mark him. They're gonna get him away from this pit. He's not gonna get in. He ults. He jumps and just they dies. They did it. EG now with the Elder Dragon. They can make such a hard push here. Super Minion still coming in top. And Baron on arrival as well. Only a few seconds left on the Baron. They're already heading over towards it. It's gotta be. There's, I feel like Contracts is dead. Poom just now respawning. It's a 5v4. Elder Dragon on a poke team? That is a death sentence, Freak. I think EG have so big of an advantage now. Elder Dragon plus a Baron, and they can go storm the CLG gates. I'm gonna try right now. Yeah, 14k health on Baron, but no one's even gonna look at this one right now as CLG stepped up for the RB4 and just could not make it happen. Well done, EG, to find the comeback. Looking for a 5-0 record to end week two. And what does CLG get but a steal on a red buff? Bounty surprisingly still on. Another 500 gold extra goes in their pocket. I actually really want to know how much objective bounty gold EG have gotten this game because it is a tremendous. Two barons, two dragons. Tremendous. A bunch of towers. Yeah. A bunch of towers. Yeah, yeah. As well. two barons, one dragon, two turrets. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to list them off all right now because we got the replay of the, of the fight, but. Honestly, this one, because of the in, in, interrupt on the teleport, you saw it on the minimap there, Braga's just moved within a screen of Gwen, and I'm just gonna say he used the ultimates, the only you know long range interrupt he has there, to stop Dokkal coming in. And that was the critical stop here. CLG were going for the all-in, expecting that teleport, and without that, see, uh, Evil Genius is able to just back off and poke the rest of them down. Huge, huge stuff for them. Then Contracts goes for the hero play, you know, trying to time it here over the back. He has no life, so he has to go, you know, right as it's getting down to around 900. And EG now, let's see if they can finish this one up and retain their undefeated spot in number one of the LCS in summer. There we go, Tor gonna fall down. And they're gonna keep that push going. Four and a half thousand gold right now. Takes gold advantage, looking pretty solid. Baron power play, still around 3K as well. Gonna knock down more of these structures. Gwen is in mid, trying to get something done on the other side of the map. You have Maybe to defend Minter right now. Too, but yeah, this is going to be the base dying. You must 5v5. Elder, timing out in 20. You'd love to wait, but they can't really. EG, push the pace, push the tempo. Yeah, it's and Elder it's Dragon Poke. Or it's falling. And honestly, there's yeah. not a good option now for EG. Poom walks in, instantly deleted. Ulti will land on a one, but they're not gonna find that kill anytime soon. The charm is in, stopwatch burned. Elder's still on for five more seconds. And the kills will keep coming through. EG gonna find it. They you did. gotta believe it. A GA down, but the burn will almost find one. Azonia's by the second. The, the fountain to save. Palafox low Elder's on that off. drop. And now Elder is off. But is a 4v5 enough? The wave. There's a couple minions still there. Up towards Doklo. The body slam flash nearly kills him. But impact goes in for too much. Contracts goes for broke. He gets one. There's a charm in the front line. Kaisa knocks down a jungler. Contract stays alive, running for his life. Both <gasps> the safety. And it's Luger. gonna be Luger going for it all. He stop watches. And Vulcan will be stopped as minions put into the base as well. TP's alive on nobody. No one can join that push for CLG. They can hold their base only. The minions, I believe, will not end it by themselves. But yeah. CLG will hold on. They're teleporting back even to make sure that tower doesn't lose any more health. CLG hold on by a string and they can't interrupt the Baron empowered recall, but they live to fight another day. That Elder Dragon just barely timing out. If they had a few more seconds of a contract still on the hunt. Oh, he's gonna drop. No, stopwatch. Then you can tank everything else there at this point. Danny cannot guarantee the kill. He flashes. Arcane shift up in a couple seconds. Needs to land Qs, but it's not gonna be enough. Danny overplays his hand. Oh, he almost had contract.
Tracks, but that stopwatch freak right there means the AD carry kill goes over to CLG, and now they have the extra champion on the field. We've got a banger on our hand. Yes, we do. Now, Dragon and Baron. We'll let him talk. The TriCast. The Orin fans chime in for CLG. They can't get Dragon, they can't Can get Orin. Can Orin still win this game, Freak? Or Orin wins every game. I like, we got Teemo chance, right? Good choice. I'm pretty sure it was evil, but we'll get no. it to you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, okay. You're right. All right, let's get the recall here. Uh, Luger's coming out of base. Does that unleash teleport? So, honestly, they could have Luger catch the top wave and do the AD carry uh, split later into the game here, even. This is going to be so fun on how they want to spread the map. Um, without the teleport there for JoJo, it's just Impact and Danny trying to answer. And, of course, EG do have the advantage if they can, again, buy time to throw out their poke. More shots they can take, more shots they can weaken CLG with. It's just that CLG have done a pretty good job of utilizing both their split push and the flank angles to actually force the engage before enough poke damage has been done. Place your bets now. Late game, fully stacked Corky and Ezreal poke comp or the split push Omega Scaler of Gwen. Dragon coming up, yep. it's gonna be the fight. 50 seconds though, we are really early to this party, Freak. That's like when you yep. show up at the time they say the party is, which is actually, you know, an right. hour before everybody else comes. Yeah, that's okay, here we go. Gotta find the first stun, damage onto a full AP Gragas, relatively squishy, the knockout looks pretty good, but he has stopwatch, he has Zonia's, burns it now. Rest Roll. of the fight, is it gonna be good enough? Dope on the front line, they're gonna get one. How about the rest though? 5v4, CLG are on the hunt, and they're gonna get inspired as well. Evil Geniuses have three. The dragon spawns in 25, and there is no Evil Geniuses jungler. It's Elder number two. Let's see if they can get the second one here from CLG. There's still a lot of poke damage from EG. They don't have a smite to steal with, but honestly, at this point, a big one can still get a miracle steal. Yeah, Super minion wait. going in the top There's, of the base. Wait, the wait. Nexus has no turret. TP is up for Danny and for Impact. Be careful because the Nexus Back could be assaulted. Dokla is there. They've got Dokla. I don't believe you can outrace Gwen killing it before you kill a Nexus, but Column. this is still dangerous as the poke keep happening. And Impact is alive in 20 for the chance that double TP play. Powell Fox is looking for the well. flank as well. It's actually soon a triple TP. Like, a good ward is three EG members in the base. Palafox tries, gets the charm, gets a root they got JoJo. damage, and they're gonna delete Corky. A one for one of the support, though, as well. Channeling out of the dragon. It's gonna be picked up there by Contracts. Rest of the fight could look good. Danny! Low. Luger goes for more. Is it gonna be enough for Danny? Vulcan drops. Danny tries, loses GA. Elder Dragon claimed, and the wave's nowhere to be seen. Now, Impact TP's in just to probably drop as well. Palafox low. He's gotta respect the fact that a jungler is here. It is two versus three. Luger is low on health, but he has teleport. And Elder Dragon on CLG here, so Impact's gotta be very careful. Contracts and Dokla have minions to work with. They're pushing for the win. The flank around behind from Inspired. He's coming to cut them off. Impact Luger can teleport died. in. Yep, he can take the wave. It's gonna be a 3v2. Connor's gotta be safe. Body slam, though. Oh! And he finds one. Take the body. This is it. CLG are gonna get everything that they ever wanted. They come back again. Wow, what a fun one. Yes, let them know. Every single person in this crowd was either chanting EG or CLG. They were zero, zero middle ground people here. There was no Switzerland. <laughs> Everybody chose the side in this one. And the side of CLG are victorious. A swap in Dokla from Academy. CLG have found themselves an incredibly strong team. It's not just, well, we're, we're just an enchanter team. You know, we're gonna have our control over bot lane and don't worry about it. They can play big team fights. Dokla, speaking of a big man himself, has been outstanding playing a carry role in the side lane. It's always a damage team look for him. His first win of the split looks great. Honestly, his whole his whole LCS, uh, you know, starting debut uh, for second, nah, never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the second iteration, the return of the big dokes has, has looked good. This is such a breath of fresh air.
yeah. for CLG. It has been so long that even when they found success at points in the last few years, yeah. people were just waiting for it to fall off, for, waiting for the team to turn back into right. a pumpkin. When they have the bongo comp and you get a few wins during that weekend, people are like, okay. we're six and 10 now. Yeah, but it was, it was just this comp. Or plus it was, okay, you got a couple of wins off of some scattered teams through the, through the middle. Yep. But they silence all doubters here taking the game off of CLG, off of uh, Evil, Evil Geniuses. Geniuses. Man, it, it was such a fun one back and forth with two Elder Dragons too. Let's, let's, let's honestly get to the interview because yeah. it, it's gonna be a good one. It will be contracts, we have a little bit to go until we get there. Just kidding.